recent days, Naples, Italy, has been shaken by a remarkable and alarming series of seismic events. Over 600 earthquakes have been recorded in the Campi Flegrei area, a volcanic region also known as the Flegrean Fields. This swarm of activity began on a Saturday, and it has propelled local officials and scientists into action. The tremors have varied in magnitude, with the strongest reaching 3.9, marking the most intense seismic activity seen in this area in nearly 40 years. Schools in nearby Potswali have been closed indefinitely, and emergency shelters are being prepared to accommodate residents who may need to evacuate. The urgency of these precautions cannot be overstated. This level of seismic activity is particularly concerning given the volcano's historical patterns and its proximity to Naples, a city teeming with life and culture. These same patterns were seen in the latest big eruption. Here's what happened back that time. The Earth has been uneasy for weeks now. The tremors have grown more frequent, rattling the wooden shutters of our home in Potswali, a small but bustling town by the Bay of Naples. Fishermen mutter to themselves about the strange warmth in the water, the absence of fish near the shore. My father, a merchant, brushes it off as another restless season in the Campi Flegrei, the burning fields where the land has always been alive with unseen fire. But I am not convinced. Today, my mother sent me to the market for olives and fresh bread, but the town square is restless. The hot springs that have long bubbled near the shore have grown hotter. The ground feels different. My feet tingle when I walk, and at times, it almost seems as if the earth itself is breathing beneath us. We wake to the sound of something shifting beneath the earth. The tremors are stronger now, more insistent, like a giant turning in its sleep beneath the soil. The well water has turned cloudy, and people whisper about the smell of sulfur, the devil's breath. Some of the elders speak of ancient times, of when the gods of fire and sea quarreled beneath our feet. Others recall the old stories, tales of a land that was once here but swallowed by the sea. Frightened neighbors gather in the church, praying for the virgin to keep us safe. But the priests, too, are uneasy. The night air is thick, heavy with something unseen but felt. A fear that creeps into our bones. The shoreline has changed overnight. What was once water is now land. A dark mass has risen from the sea, steaming, hissing. My father takes me to see it, his merchant's curiosity outweighing his fear. He murmurs about how the bay is shrinking, the water pulled back as if the earth is drinking it in. More people are leaving. The roads to Naples are crowded with carts, families carrying whatever they can. My mother begs my father to leave, but he hesitates. This is our home, our livelihood. How do you abandon the only life you know? The night is filled with a terrible sound. A groaning, deep and low, as if the earth itself is in pain. I cannot sleep. None of us can. The tremors have not stopped, and now cracks appear in the walls of our home. In the distance, over the dark mass that has risen near the shore, there is a strange glow. Father finally agrees, we must go. By sunrise, we will head for Naples. Dawn breaks, but the sky does not brighten. A heavy cloud, dark and terrible, spreads over the horizon. The air is thick, choking with ash. I clutch my mother's hand as we hurry through the streets, my father ahead of us. Then, the ground shudders violently. A sound like a thousand thunderstorms crackles through the air, and behind us, the sky erupts in fire. The sea foams and surges, the land itself splitting apart. From the dark mound near the shore, fire and rock burst forth, raining down upon the fleeing town. Mani Movo is born in fire and fury. We run. We run past the church, past the market where we bought our daily bread, past the dock where my father's trade ships once arrived. But it is all disappearing, swallowed in the choking storm of ash and stone. We do not look back. We reach Naples by nightfall, covered in ash. The city is filled with others like us, refugees with wide eyes and sooty faces. We turn to watch the sky over Potswally, what was once our home now hidden beneath the monstrous cloud. 
People murmur about what we have seen, about the mountain that was not there yesterday, but now stands taller than any building. The earth is still, but we know now that it only sleeps, waiting for the next time it will awaken. But that can be sooner than later.